Okay, let's take a look at Honeycomb in action. The first thing you'll notice is that there are no buttons on the front. All of the navigation controls are at the bottom of the screen, and they're virtual. They're drawn with pixels rather than paint. This has a couple of advantages. First, it means that the controls are always down, no matter how it is that you're holding the device. Also, the controls can reconfigure themselves depending on what you need to do. You'll see a little bit of that later on in the demo. Above the navigation controls is our new home screen for Honeycomb. Like previous versions of Android, you can customize your experience with widgets and shortcuts. For Honeycomb, though, we made, we've made the widgets a lot more powerful. Let's take a look at the widgets that I have. Here I have my Gmail inbox. This is a great way of just at a glance seeing if there's anything important I need to deal with. Here's my calendar, and it's telling me I need to be here. Uh, and here are the bookmarks from the browser. On this screen, I have some shortcuts to contacts. I can use these to keep track of their status, and also quickly to uh, email or IM my contacts. Here I have a YouTube widget showing me what's popular on YouTube. And then back over here, I have a couple of family photographs. So I already have everything at my fingertips, and I haven't even launched any applications yet. This shows what you can do with an operating system that was designed from the ground up to support multitasking. In this case, I'm letting Android do the multitasking for me, so I don't have to. The system is working to find information that is useful and relevant to me, and it's bringing it forward and keeping it all up to date. You can also see that we have an entirely new visual design for Honeycomb. We were aiming for something that is futuristic but familiar. It's like the kind of UI you've been seeing in sci-fi movies, where everything is 3D, it's controlled by gestures, and information reses in when you need it, and it de when you don't. Now, because mobile devices are very personal, people have always loved customizing their Android phones. And we've put a lot of work into making that easier than ever on tablets. So for example, if I want to add a new widget to this screen, I just tap the plus up here. Now here I can see all of my customization options in one place. There's widgets, shortcuts, wallpapers. We also have previews of the widgets, so you know right away what you're going to get. So if I want to add a clock to that screen, I just tap it, and it flies into place. If I want to move it, I can just pick it up and drag it where I want. Let me add another widget. In this case, I'm going to add a books widget. Drop that there. This widget is showing me the books that I've purchased from Google eBooks. It gives me quick access to what I'm currently reading. It's kind of like a virtual nightstand. Now, I could spend all day talking about just the home screen, but I want to show you some other apps as well. Let me start with the browser. I'm going to use my bookmark widget to open the New York Times. New York Times is opening. Now, if you look here, you'll see something very familiar. All of my pages are in tabs at the top of the screen, the way nature intended. You can see I had previously opened Gizmodo here. And I have New York Times in this tab. And I can create new tabs, switch between tabs, close tabs. It's really like a desktop experience. And the Honeycomb browser now has other desktop features as well, like incognito mode, autofill, and bookmark sync with Chrome. Let's look at Gmail. This app has been completely redesigned for tablets. It's got a nice minimal design, and it's actually now my favorite Gmail client. You have quick access to all of your labels down this side, and across the top there are icons for common actions. Now, watch what happens when I select a message. Here's the icons up here. I'm going to select these three messages. And you saw that the icons flipped to show the actions that I can now take on these particular messages. So hiring plan, important announcement, product roadmap, archive that, very satisfying. But this message, this looks more promising, so I'm going to read that. Dessert recommendation, bring some chocolate bags. OK, that looks good. Um, so. One of the strengths of Android has always been that you can mash up applications. You can easily access features in one app from a different app. Of course, that's still true in Honeycomb. So I'm going to jump directly from, the map, directly from Gmail into Maps to find this dessert place that Roman is recommending. OK, so we're in Google Maps 5.0. This app is already awesome on phones, but it's even better on a tablet. It really works well with a larger screen. Now, when I zoom in far enough, 
something magical happens. You can see that the building is popped out of the ground in 3D. You can also tilt and rotate and zoom. And that's a notification coming in at the bottom of the screen. I'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so a notification came in, and this is a good opportunity for me to talk about the notification system. This has been a big hit on phones, and we've redesigned it to be even better on a tablet. The notifications are still not intrusive. They don't interrupt whatever you're doing. I was showing maps, the notification came in. But now they carry more information, including Sorry. Uh, including a photo if the notification is from a person. So uh, Andy Rubin is sending me something. Let me read that. Don't forget to show task switching. Okay, I'm going to show task switching. Uh, there's now always a button on the system bar down here that brings up a list of the last few apps I was in. Let me bring that up. This list has thumbnails showing the app state, so it's really easy to see what you want. And if you look closely down here, you can see a miniature version of the Bellagio that I was just looking at. If I want to jump back to the email you saw earlier, I can do that just by tapping back an email. And if I open this again, you can see what I was doing before the demo. I was playing games and watching videos. Um, but let me show you Dungeon Defenders. So I jump back in right where I was before. In this case, I'm about to get mauled by a bunch of goblins. Um, this game, I can tell you from extensive personal research, is really great on this hardware. Um, it's been optimized specifically for the tablet, and you can see that it has a really nice frame rate. Zoom in, zoom out, defend myself a little bit. Uh, in fact, this version of Dungeon Defenders has the best resolution of any mobile device. It has more levels, it has more detailed textures, and it can support more than twice as many bad guys on the screen at the same time. Still not sure that last part was a good idea. Okay, uh, let's look at YouTube too. When I launch it, it shows popular videos in the 3D wall. And again, you can see the, re in the uh, videos resing in as they load. Let's find a video to watch. I'm going to go up here and search. And let's see what the net has to say about Honeycomb. But, you know, official Honeycomb Android 3.0 preview. So I tap that, the video loads. I can scroll forward a bit. Hey, that looks familiar. It's amazing what you can find on YouTube. Okay. Videos are really great on the screen, and of course, books are too. Uh, I'm going to launch the Honeycomb version of Google eBooks. Now, eBooks has 3 million titles to choose from. I'm starting with about 10 here. And just like YouTube and Maps, the books are presented as a simple 3D space. The cool thing about this app is that it synchronizes automatically with the cloud. So your books are available anywhere, in a browser, on your phone, on a tablet, and your purchases and even the last page you read are kept in sync across all of your devices. All of this is done wirelessly. There's no cables, there's no tethering, and it's all automatic. It's kind of like literary, literary telepathy. Reading a book is very natural, too. It looks just like the real thing. I'm going to bring this up. And when I turn pages, it feels just like a book. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but when I tapped the screen, uh, the controls at the bottom faded away once I started reading. We call that lights out mode. And we can do this because all of the controls are virtual. This really lets you concentrate on the content. And of course, you can bring back the controls just by tapping. Now, we've seen that Honeycomb makes a really nice entertainment device, but Android has always been a great communication platform as well. Earlier, you saw me jump into Google Talk using notifications and multitasking, but sometimes you want face-to-face -face communication, and now Honeycomb supports that too. I can go back into Google Talk, and I'll start a video chat with Matthias Duarte, He's our design director and responsible for the cool new look of Honeycomb. <coughs> the nice thing about Android's video chat is that because it's built into Google Talk, you can video chat with any of the hundreds of millions of users, of Gmail users out there already, using laptops or desktops that they already have. 
I hit voice chat instead of video chat. Okay, here we go. Hey, Matthias, how are you? Hey, Mike, I'm so glad you called. The whole team wants to congratulate you here. Hey, guys, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> So, I don't know if you can see this, but um, there's a front-facing camera, and it's pointing up here. So, this guy's going to serve as a proxy for me. So, that's a front-facing camera. All right. Thanks, Matthias. Uh, you know, if you can catch him on the show floor, he'll be giving out these droids. So, good luck. All right. Um, we're really excited about this release, and there's a lot more good stuff that we're working on. So, please stay tuned. <laughs>